everybody. Um, I wanted to post a video to help supplement your reading of the cask of Amontillado. Also, you probably didn't know how to say Amontillado until just now. Um, so when we're together in class, I like to read the start of a story with you and help you with certain concepts, words, things like that to make sure you get started on the right foot. So I wanted to do the same thing for you, but digitally. So what I'm gonna go through is the first page of the story, which is page nine in the packet and a couple things before I start. Um, so what I want you to know is that the narrator isn't named for a little bit, but his name is Monstressor. Um, the story is very kind of like Gothic, which you'll learn more about what Gothic means in a literary sense. Um, later on, but it's very kind of like dark, mysterious, spooky. So my advice with this story is to read through it once entirely understanding what you understand. You might miss certain chunks or words. That's okay. Read through it once, get what you're going to get, check vocab, and then read it again. Here's what I will say. The first page is the hardest with vocab, and that's also why I want to go through it with you. So as you read, think about characters, setting, um, and mood. Ultimately, you will be writing about mood. This is very similar to what we've done with our other short stories, so I'm very confident that you guys can do it. So what I'm going to do for you is read through the first page and then read through it again with my comments and questions. The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne best as I could, but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. You, who so well know the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that gave utterance to a threat. At length, I would be avenged. This was a point definitively settled but the very definitiveness with which it was resolved precluded the idea of risk. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. A wrong is unredressed when retribution overtakes its redresser. It is equally unredressed when the avenger fails to make himself felt as such to him who has done the wrong. It must be understood that neither by word nor deed had I given Fortunato cause to doubt my goodwill. I continued, as was my, into smile in his face, and he did not perceive that my smile now was at the thought of his immolation. He had a weak point, this Fortunato, although in other regards he was a man to be respected and even feared. He prided himself on his connoisseurship in wine, Few Italians have the true virtuoso spirit. For the most part, their enthusiasm is adopted to suit the time and opportunity to practice imposture upon the British and Aus Austrian millionaires. In painting and gemmary, Fortunato, like his countrymen, was a quack. But in the matter of old wines, he was sincere. In this respect, I did not differ from him materially. I was skillful in the Italian vintages myself and bought largely whenever I could. It was dusk one evening during the supreme madness of the carnival season that I had encountered my friend. He accosted me with excessive warmth for he had been drinking much. The man wore motley. He had an, a tight fitting party striped dress and his head was surmounted by the conical cap and bells. I was so pleased to see him that I thought I should never have done wringing his hand. I said to him, my dear Fortunato, you are luckily met. How remarkably well you are looking today. But I have received a pipe of what passes for a Montelado, and I have my doubts. How, said he, a Montelado, a pipe impossible. And in the middle of the carnival? I have my doubts, I replied, and I was silly enough to pay the full Amontillado price without consulting you in the matter. You were not to be found and I was fearful of losing a bargain. Amontillado, I have my doubts. Amontillado? 
and I must satisfy them. Amontillado! As you are engaged, I am on my way to Lucrezzi. If anyone has a critical turn, it is he. He will tell me Lucrezzi cannot tell Amontillado from Sherry. All right, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. So I'm going to go back through and think through a couple things that are going to help you hopefully get started on um, a good foot. What I want you to think about as we go through the first paragraph, why does the narrator want to get revenge on Fortunato? The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could, but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. So here the narrator says he's been injured somehow by Fortunato. It's most likely not a physical injury, but something that's hurt him as a person, emotionally, mentally, something that has made him want to get revenge. You, who know so well the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that gave utterance to a threat. So here, this is really interesting. The narrator says you, he's talking to us. Um, just like if I was saying you through the video, you are the listener, you are the reader. He's saying that we know his soul. We don't, we don't know him. This is the second sentence of a story. So why is he doing this? Um, is he trying to get us on his side, make him sort of his ally, his friend? Very interesting moment here. At length, I would be avenged. This was at point definitely settled, but the very definitiveness with which it was resolved precluded the idea of risk. This is a really intense sentence, um, but what I want you to know is that he's basically saying like, I am set on revenge. I am definitely getting revenge. It's risky, but I'm doing it. He's gotta get revenge. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. A wrong is unredressed when retribution overtakes its redresser. It is equally unredressed when the avenger fails to make himself as such to him who has done wrong. Again, a confusing sentence. Um, this one was really even hard for me. These words I'm not familiar with, impunity, unredressed, um, retribution. Definitely knew the word avenger, I'll say that much. Um, but in a nutshell, what this sentence is saying is that like, if you're getting revenge, like go all the way. Um, Revenge must be complete, must be absolute, and you have to show no mercy. If you're getting revenge, you commit. It must be understood that neither by word nor deed had I given Fortunato cause to doubt my goodwill. I continued as was my way and to smile in his face and did not perceive that my smile was now at the thought of his immolation. So here the narrator saying, basically that he has like this perfect facade. He's been putting on this friendly face. He is tricking Fortunato. He's given Fortunato no reason to doubt him. Um, so the narrator is smiling as he meets Fortunato, but he's smiling because he's thinking about revenge about his downfall, which is kind of creepy, but as we continue on, I have one more guiding question for you. Um, and that is to think about how Monstressor manipulates Fortunato into the catacombs and keeps him moving further down. Remember catacombs are the sort of underground graveyard. It's very creepy. Um, there's a link to a picture in the vocab sheet. I love this setting. It's super spooky. It's super dark. Um, definitely look up catacombs if you are into kind of the spooky stuff. Um, side note, there's a great movie that takes place in the Paris catacombs. It's called As Above, So Below. If you like horror movies, watch it over the break. It's very good. He had a weak point, this Fortunato, although in other regards, he was a man to be respected and even feared. He prided himself on his connoisseurship or expertise in wine. Few Italians have the true virtuoso spirit. For the most part, their enthusiasm is adopted to suit the time and opportunity to practice imposture upon the British and Austrian millionaires. In painting and geometry, Fortunato, like his countrymen, was a quack or a fool. But in the matter of old wines, he was sincere. In this respect, I did not differ from him materially. I was skillful in the Italian vintages myself and bought largely whenever I could. Here the narrator gives us some information about Fortunato. He's an expert in wines. Um, he knows 
all about different types of wine, Italian vintages, that's just a way of saying Italian wines. We know the narrator wants revenge, so it's likely he's going to use Fortunato's love of wines to his advantage. It was about dusk one evening during the supreme madness of the carnival season that I encountered my friend. Weird that he calls him his friend, he's about to get revenge on him. Just a side note. He accosted me with excessive warmth, for he had been drinking much. The man wore motley. He had on tight-fitting, party-striped dress, and his head was surmounted by a conical cap and bells. I was so pleased to see him that I thought I should never have done wringing his hand. So we get more about the setting. There's a carnival, a festival. Um, Fortunato's had a little too much to drink. He's very friendly and is wearing this crazy jester outfit. So he's kind of like a fool right now, which is great for the narrator. So the narrator can take advantage of him basically to enact his revenge. Um, and the narrator's so happy to meet Fortunato. He's just shaking his hand just obsessively. He's so happy he's finally gonna get revenge. Fortunato doesn't suspect a thing. I said to him, my dear Fortunato, you are luckily met. How remarkably well you are looking today, but I have received a pipe of what passes for Amontillado and I have my doubts. How, said he, Amontillado, a pipe? Impossible. And in the middle of the carnival? So I'm gonna stop here. The rest of the page sort of shows the narrator tricking Fortunato into the catacombs. So coming back to our guiding question, um, we see that Amontillado is a nice type of wine. Fortunato really likes wine. So the narrator is going to use this to kind of lure him in and trap him. Um, it's sort of like telling me, hey, I've got a bunch of kittens, come see these kittens. And I'm like, yes, please, I will follow you anywhere. You have kittens. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the narrator here is going to manipulate Fortunato using his love of this wine, Amontillado. Um, and there we get the title of the story as well. Good luck reading. Um, let me know if you have questions. If students seem to be struggling, I will post more updates and perhaps examples in the chart. Good luck. I really like this story. I hope you like it too. Um, please keep an eye out on Google Classroom too. I will be uploading a graphic novel version of this. Uh, which is kind of fun if you like graphic novels. Check it out. I hope I get to talk to you guys soon. I miss you and have a good week.